Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Batman. And today I'm giving you guys my review on The Flash Season 7, Episode Dose. The Speed of Thought. I'm also going to give you my breakdown. This is more of my podcast-centered review. It's not a traditional review. Well, let's get started. So, what, oh, this episode... <laughs> I'm gonna... Hold on, before I do that. I'm gonna do what I did with the last one. I'm going to give a non-spoiler. And then I'm gonna give a spoiler review. Non-spoiler. This episode picks up on how the last episode ended, so if you haven't watched the last episode, this is a spoiler for that. It starts off with Barry, Sisko, and Caitlin in the Cortex. And they're talking about Nash. And his death. Wait, no, they're not in the cortex. They're in the... The Hall of Fallen Heroes. So... People who have either been erased from existence or died through the changes in the timeline, they're there, yet... Their their names are also nano-inscribed in a wall... So that Team Flash, no matter what, will always remember the people they've lost. So it's Barry, Caitlin, Cisco, and Joe. And they're talking about Nash and all of the other Harrison Wells that we've met over the years. Well, except for the ex- exception of Eobard Thon, who wasn't even really a Wells. But still, they're talking about Harry, HR, Shuzuk, and... The, the rest of the council of Wells, too. How they all had something. And whenever it came to answers, they could always count on a Wells. And Cisco's sad because he lost his friend. Not just one. But all. Which the whole HR thing honestly doesn't make sense to me. Why would they be sad over HR dying? Again, well, he already died. They would be sad for that death. Not... This one. He died in season three. And. Yeah. So. They're talking about. The Wellses. And. After that. Cisco and Caitlin leave. Well I should better say. Cisco and Frost. And Joe and Barry are talking. And Barry. Is saying to Joe. No matter what I do, it's almost like my heart is my enemy's greatest weapon against me. Blood work. Mirror Mistress. Both used him, yes. And Joe's telling him, look, don't think like that. Don't blame yourself. You're only human. 
you may have superpowers, but your superpower is your heart. And he's right. So they work on a way to open a portal to the Mirrorverse. But Barry discovers something. He has speed thinking where he can predict the unpredictable. This... That was my non-spoiler part of this. Now to get into spoiler territory. So, I forget which black hole member Eva's working with, but we see she's working with a black hole member. We also found out last episode that she's not the original Eva McCulloch. And that she's the mirror duplicate. The real Eva McCulloch is dead. So when Joseph Carver said she's a phantom, there was some validity behind that. Now Barry is developing multiple different theories, running algorithms in his head to figure out how to open a portal to the mirrorverse. Now remember that speed thinking I told you guys about? Yeah, he's been using it, but here's a, he can't, he can predict everything else, but he can't predict emotion. He's becoming like the thinker. He's not thinking like Barry Allen with his heart. He's thinking with his mind. The speed thinking changed him. And we find out that in, if Barry were to have, need to open a portal to the, to the Mirrorverse, he needs to use the Tachyon prototype. They use it because Eva has dark matter particles on her from whenever she used Bloodworks Blood to open her portal. But here's the problem. I actually have to get it off of her. And here's where the conflict goes in. Frost distracts her. And Barry had time to run her out of the way before she got shot. He just stood there. He made up a cure. Cisco was peeved. Yeah, he was not happy. But she develops a cure. The speed thinking, it just... Honestly, Barry was the villain of this episode. He exposes Eva on national television by hacking McCulloch Technologies. And to those of you who have watched The Flash, you're like, how? Cisco couldn't do that. Barry can do almost anything now. Almost... No. He can do pretty much anything. He's able to predict the unpredictable. The only thing he can't predict is feelings. So they use the dark matter. But they only have enough to save two or one. Now, Camilla and Singh, they could save. Or they could use all of their tachyons and dark matter to save Iris. Now, Barry consults Gideon on this, and then he runs a simulation of what would happen if he told Team Flash. And... He believes that they would vote for Camilla. So he does it, and whenever he's building the thing, Cisco comes in, questions him, like, you decided to do this without questioning your team? Why? Barry tells him, I ran a simulation. You all choose Camilla and sing, not Iris. He's like, 
You don't know what I do. And why would you just save Iris? Why can't we save all three? We can only save two or one. We have to choose. Like, it's more difficult to choose on this. And he says, okay, so why Iris? Barry says, because she has more knowledge of Eva. She can be used as... Now, this is the thing that Barry Dundee messed up on. He called Camilla and Singh expendable. So, Cisco... Cisco pulls out a photon rifle. I think that's what it is. And Caitlin becomes a speedster with uh, Velocity X, which was awesome. He kicks the crap out of all of them. And then he opens the portal. portal. But I I Iris is refusing because Barry won't help save them. And he keeps telling her, Iris... You're resisting is damaging the portal and it could possibly hurt you. It's not safe. She gets pulled out and it does hurt her. Now this is what jogs Barry back to being Barry Allen. He's like, I could not see this. And he told her whenever he was... Because she told him to save Camilla and sing. And he said, this is not the outcome I foresaw. Because he predicted, he's predicting with logic, not emotion. Just like the thinker. And just like any human being, you cannot predict emotion. That is the only thing that is truly unpredictable. Now, Iris is hurting from what it looks like on the verge of death. Now this is a twist. We cut to what I believe is the CCPD. An officer is saying, hey, thank Fred for the brownies. I don't remember this guy exactly. He's like, we'll do. She's in the elevator. And this dude just attacks her and takes her body. I think it's Dawn. But we, caught, we cut back to the night where Eobard Dawn takes over. Ori the original Harrison Wells body. He does that. It does the whole. They're not coming to save you. They're coming to save me. He buries him. And runs off. But. We see this glowing light. And it forms a person. The original Harrison Wells. No I'm just like. What? What? Okay, here's the thing. I think since, you know, all the other Wells died and there's only one left, it conjured him up. But here's the thing. That creates so many, many timeline changes. I guess that per they expose Eobard as being a... Do a imposter to the world because if they didn't do that well then Harrison Wells would be a wanted man for the murder of Nora Allen for what Reverse Flash did so I believe that what happened is because the original Harrison Wells Happen. Star Labs is, you know, the Star Labs we have in the comics, I believe. But I could be wrong. But here's the thing. Him being alive messes up a lot of things. That, well, granted, Earth Prime could have fixed. It messes up the whole... Reverse Flash, Harrison Wells thing. Harry, it messes up every single Wells. 
So that basically mean that he never took over his body and Barry just ended up stopping Reverse Flash while Reverse Flash was wearing the Harrison Wells moniker. I don't know. I want to see where that goes next episode. I really liked this episode. It had a lot of twists and turns. This is the speed of thought. And if I had to rate this episode, I'd have to give it an 8 out of 10. Alright guys, that's all for me today. God bless. Happy. Well, this isn't gaming, so living. See you in the next video. Who knows, if this gets enough views, I might start doing reviews on Superman and Lois. Peace out. Or the other Arrowverse shows.